Hey what's going on gang welcome to your second git and github tutorial and in this video I'm going to go through how to install git on your computer. Alright then so before we start using git on our computer we first have to install it. Now that's really easy to do and I'm going to show you two ways to do it. The first way is to go to the git website and this link I'll leave down below and then click one of these four links here depending on your operating system. That's going to download it to your computer, just go through the installation steps and boom you have git installed. Now if you're on Windows I am going to recommend to do this instead, download commander which is a command line interface for Windows and if you download the full version it's going to come with git installed as well. So I would recommend to do that purely because this is a really cool tool as well as installing git. Finally, I'm going to recommend Atom for your text editor. That's what I'm going to be using in this series as well. You can download that at atom.io. The link is also going to be down below. All right then, so once you've downloaded Git, and hopefully if you're on Windows, downloaded Commander, then you want to open up your command line interface. And uh, to check that you've got Git installed, all you need to do is say Git, then double dash version, and if this throws back a number, then you have been successful in installing Git. Cool. So the next thing I want to do is set up a couple of options for Git, and that is the username and the user email. Now, I want to do this because when you start making changes in Git, Git is going to want to know who is making those changes so they can keep track of it. All right. So let's add in our username. First of all, we'll say Git config. And this is going to be double dash global because we're setting this in a global capacity. And then it's user dot name. I'm going to call myself I am Sean JP. And then also we want a user email. So we'll say git config, then double dash global. Then this time it's going to be user dot email. And I'm going to put Sean at Sean hyphen pelling dot com. This email does not exist, so <laughs> don't try emailing to it. Okay, so now we've set up our username and email, and if at any point we wanted to see what they are registered as, we can say git config and then user.name, and that's going to throw back the username, same for the email. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is just walk you through a few basic command line uh, commands, right, that we're going to be using throughout this series. So if you've never used it before, feel free to watch this, otherwise, just skip to the next tutorial. So, first of all, I'm going to show you how to change directories. Now, that we do cd, then double dot to go up. And by the way, there's a space between cd and double dot. And that's going to take us up a directory. You can see I've gone from being in Sean to just users. Now, if I want to go back into the Sean directory, I can say cd. And that stands for change directory, by the way. And then just say Sean, the directory I want to go into. All right. I'm going to cd again, and this time go into documents, because I know there's a documents folder in there. Now, if I want to list the contents of this documents folder, I can say ls, that's going to list everything inside it, or on Windows, dir, that does a similar thing, but I prefer ls. So anyway, that's everything inside this directory. So now I know if I wanted to cd into another directory, I could do, because I'm just looking at this list of different directories. Now, if I want to make a new directory, I can do that by saying mk for make, dir for directory, and I'm just going to call this test. This is going to make a directory called test within my current directory. So I'm going to use ls to list those again. And now I can see test right here. Cool. So let's just go into that directory, cd test. Uh, when we're in here, we can make a new file. Now, if you're using Commander or if you're on Mac, you can say touch. If you're just using Windows Basic Command Line Interface, you can't do this. Um, but I'm going to say touch, and then we name the file. So I'm going to call this index.html. And this is going to create an index.html file within this test directory. If I type ls, I'm going to be able to see that right here. All right. So now say I want to open this um, file with Atom, my text editor. I can just say Atom and then the file name, so index.html. This is going to open up Atom for me. It might take a second or two, and it's going to open it up with index.html loaded into it, ready for me to edit, which is really cool. Now, this is taking a little bit of time, but there we go. So I've got index.html open right there. Cool. So I'll close that off. Now, to delete a file, I can say rm. That stands for remove, and that's going to be index.html like so. Now if I type ls, we're not going to see that file anymore because it's been deleted. 
Now I'm going to go up a directory and this time I want to delete the test directory so I can do rmdir, so remove directory and that's going to be test. Now I want to type ls to list the different things, test is going to be gone. Okay, so that is just an overview of some of the different commands we might be using in this series. Dead simple, if you need to watch this a couple of times, do so because they're going to be the most basic commands that you will be using in the command line. And once you've got the hang of them, they are very easy to remember. Okay, so there we go then. We've got Git installed on our computer. So in the next lesson, we can go ahead and start using it.